じちゃんシグマさんが戻ってきたようんどうにか間に合ったようじゃなはあ、Where are the others? エビルームの中だよ。They went in already? そうじゃ。Why didn't you two? Have you been waiting for me? うん。じっちゃんが投票の前にどうしても話しておきたいことがあるからって。Oh? まあ、大したことではないんじゃがな。わしとクオークは次のラウンドで必ず協力を選ぶ。ただ、そのことを伝えておきたかったんじゃ。And you had to tell me that no matter what. Seems kind of pointless. I mean, words are cheap. You can promise whatever you want. t a s h k a n i soja ga, washira ni wa konkyo ga aru. Kanarazu, kyo ryoko o erabu to yu konkyo ga na. Okay, go ahead. Washito kuoku no BP wa tomo ni hachi. Shojiki ni yu ga, sude ni leech ga kakatte oru jo tai nanja. Kono jo tai de. わしらが BP を9以上にするにはどうすればよいかまず前提条件としてシグマに協力を選んでもらう必要があるわけじゃがこの条件のもとではわしらが協力を選ぼうと裏切りを選ぼうといずれにせよ同じなんじゃよ。You get 9PP、uh, 9 whether you got 2 or 3 points そうじゃ。であるならばあえてシグマを裏切るまでもない。共に協力を出し合ってポイントを増やした方が賢明じゃろ True, but you must have considered that I'll choose betray. That would mean you'd choose betray to protect yourselves. だからじっちゃんはそれはしないって宣言してるんだよ。うん。Can I trust you? もちろんじゃ。Alright, tell me one thing. Let's say we do this and both ally. Everyone gets two points. That means you and Quark will have enough to leave, which is great for you, but I'll be stuck with me a measly five. How do I know you aren't going to just open the number nine door and leave us in the lurch? How? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. 他の者たちを置き去りにして二人だけで脱出するわけにはいかんからな。僕も誓う。約束する。Man, so all you've got is a promise, huh? わしは約束は必ず守る。信じてくれ。お願い。信じて、シグマさん。Alright, fine. I'll trust you. 投票の締め切りまで残り2分ですでは頼んだぞシグマ絶対に協力だよ約束だからね With that they turned and ran into the AB room second from the right Well I guess I should get moving I am so shocked I'm actually getting to vote again. This normally does not happen. Normally, some shit happens. And so far, we've only got one dead person. This is weird. Oh. <sighs> I had a decision to make. Should I trust Quark and Tenmyoji? Well, I could believe they were telling the truth and still betray them. That would bring my BP to six. I'd be that much closer to nine. And choosing betray would guarantee that they wouldn't try and escape without the rest of us. Betrayal seemed like the safe bet, but. Tenmyoji, I could betray easily enough, but Quark? What the hell was I gonna do? And yeah, betrayal may seem like the safe bet, absolutely, but 
I highly doubt they're gonna betray you either. They're definitely gonna ally because even if they betrayed you and you allied, who you're gonna be down some points, sir. Cue Fuck it. I mean, I'm not getting out of here. Regardless of whichever one I pick. Ambidex I guarantee Fi still has one BP. Poor girl. And I either might be down to one BP or not. Ambidex game. I know someone's got at least 10 right now. <laughs> why? But why? But why? You bastard. You asshole. Hey, what the hell, guys? Why'd you betray me? Alright, fine. Why you break your promise, Tenmyoji? What? So you're not going to leave? Yeah, so do I. What? What? Don't tell me. The words were barely out of her mouth when Tenmyoji and Kork ran past. Oi! Mateo! Konoero! Yo! Tsubasa! Masaka! どうしたするつもりなんですか。そうじゃなかった。開かないでしょ。旧の扉。どうした。外に出て仲間を呼んでくるの。ゼロボスを捕まえるためにね。天明と国王君も行くのか。ああ、すまんな。ごめんね、み
9の扉閉鎖まで残り9秒ですさあ行くよ天明寺さんクロークうんまちょっと待ってシグマさんこれ読んでもらえるコーク held something out I looked down to see two pieces of folded paper. What is this? Tegami. AB game no mind, he's so choice to the Kaitanda. Koreo yon de Moraeva, Zichan to Boku no Koto, Lakate Morae to Mo. Dakara. Hi. He pressed it into my hand. Sorizane, Sigma san. Then he turned and ran toward the door, Tenmyoji and Clover followed in his footsteps. I was so surprised by the letter that I didn't even try to stop them. Before I could think of anything to say. Diana. Diana. I like how they say see you later. Like, they're actually gonna see us again. They're not. の扉を閉鎖しましたこれにてノナリーゲームは終了となりますお疲れ様でしたなおゲームの終了に伴い施設内にある旧の扉以外のすべての扉は開放されますどうぞごゆっくりとお過ごしください残りの余生をこの施設の中で。This is not a game over, by the way. <笑> Believe this is actually the Tenmyoji end. 行っちまったな。あとは、あの三人が助けを呼んでくれることを祈るばかりだな。ええ。そうですね。I looked down at Quark's letter and slowly unfolded it. His handwriting was still slightly uneven, but he'd filled both pages with writing. I began to read. It was a really stormy day when he found me. He said the rain was coming down so hard it almost hurt, but somehow he managed to hear a baby crying. I guess I must have been crying pretty loud. He took me home and did his best to raise me, but he'd never been married or had a kid before, so I think it was really hard for him. He couldn't figure out how to mix the formula, so he was always carrying the directions around with him. Also, I guess I was a pretty picky eater, so if he didn't get the water to formula ratio just right, I wouldn't eat it. I guess I was kind of a pain, huh? But he didn't give up, and now here I am. When he found me, I was really, really small, and he was worried that I might not make it. That's why he named me Quark. A quark is like a really, really small thing, and I was really, really small too. Grandpa didn't need to worry, though, because it turned out that I was pretty tough. When I was one, he forgot I was sleeping in the bed of his trunk and drove off. I rolled out and went off. The back, and I didn't even get scratched. I started walking when I was two, and when he wasn't looking, I fell down the stairs. I didn't get hurt then either. You're just a trouble child, that's what you are. When I was three, I got really sick. I had a super high fever for a week, but eventually I got better. I guess you could say I'm pretty lucky. Anyway, I didn't really have any more accidents after that, and I was a pretty healthy kid. By the time I was six, I'd started helping Grandpa out with his work. His job was to gather junk from abandoned buildings. Then he'd fix it up or pull out the useful parts and sell them. There were plenty of abandoned buildings, but finding good stuff in them was hard. You had to know which parts were useful, or you could end up wasting a bunch of time. Every time I'd find something, he'd explain to me what it was, how it was supposed to work, how to fix it, all sorts of things. Usually, though, I just wanted to finish up work so I could go to the theater. The theater came to our town once a week in a wagon. They'd show old news or movies. 
I went every single week, but Grandpa only went every once in a while, and he'd only go weeks when we when they showed movies. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that I'd been adopted until I was seven. One of the other kids on my block told me. I guess after Grandpa found me, he looked over, all over town to try and find someone who'd take me. The kid from my block actually had a mom, and he'd ask her... He'd asked her if she would take me, too. I gotta admit, I was pretty shocked when I heard that. There weren't a lot of kids with parents around, so hearing that someone lived with his actual mom was really was pretty impressive. I was also kind of surprised that Grandpa had tried to get someone else to take me. Did that mean he didn't want me? The kid who told me about Grandpa trying to get rid of me was a real jerk. He was totally spoiled, and he'd brag to everyone about how he had a mom. He liked to come up to me while I was working and say stuff like, "Must be hard not having, ha, ha, not, eh, bleh, must be hard not having a mother." It never bothered me before, but after I found out that Grandpa had adopted me, I started to think that maybe he didn't really want me. If I could work on my own, then he could get rid of me. I was scared to know the truth, so I never asked him. Then one day he took me to a bar in our neighborhood. During the day, of course. He went there sometimes to drink scotch, but I'd never gone before. When we got in, he just walked up to the counter with that grumpy look he has, and I thought, oh no, he's going to make me work here. But I was wrong. I saw him pass something to the bartender, and then he picked me up and set me down on a stool next to the counter. The stool was pretty high, especially for a seven-year-old kid, and my legs just dangled off of it. It seemed really, really high to me, and I was pretty nervous. Eventually, the bartender came back over with a glass of scotch and another big glass full of something else. As I looked closer, I realized that the second glass was full of some sort of brown liquid with a scoop of ice cream in it. It took me a mo minute to realize that it was what it was, a root beer float. I'd never seen one before. I was so surprised. Root beer was even more expensive than the nicest alcohol in the bar. To me and the other kids, it seemed more like an urban legend than a real drink. But there it was, right in front of me. I stared at the float. I still wasn't sure it was real at that point, and then turned to look at Grandpa. He looked back at me. I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the bartender. He'd already turned around and moved off, though, so I figured he must have must have put the glass down in front of me on purpose. It still didn't seem like it could be real, and I was just staring at it when Grandpa told me to hurry up and drink it before the ice cream melted. His gruff voice sounded like an angel's. Is this really mine? He nodded. Words can't describe how awesome it was. I'd never tasted anything like root beer before. The creamy sweetness of the ice cream made my entire head feel light. I felt like the luckiest boy in the whole world. That's not an exaggeration. I really thought that. The root beer float was delicious, but what made me even happier was Grandpa. When I looked over at him, he was smiling. I know that's got to be hard for you to imagine, but he really was. Right then, I didn't care whether he'd just found me and adopted me or not. He brought, he'd bought me a root beer float. That made me way luckier than some kid who had a mother, but never had never tasted root beer. Of course, after we left the bar, he was the first kid I bragged to. So Grandpa and I were doing pretty good. Until the fight. I was in a super bad mood that day. I'd torn one of my shoes that morning, and some old drunk guy had yelled at me. All the junk I found was totally useless. The day was almost over, and I was fed up, so I just grabbed some random trash and took it back to the house. When I showed what I'd found to Grandpa, he frowned. He started going through each thing I'd brought back, explaining why they were all useless. I got really mad and just yelled, I don't care! Then he got mad and I couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I was pretty upset, and I started thinking that maybe Grandpa had only adopted me so he could raise me to work and make money for him. After a while, I went and hid in an abandoned building, but by then I'd, it, eh, I'd started to calm down and think that maybe I should go back and apologize. It started raining pretty hard, though, so I decided to wait for it to stop. 
but that was just an excuse. The truth was that I was nervous. Part of me knew I'd done something wrong, but I didn't want to admit it. The rain didn't stop, though, so I just sat there, staring out at the gloomy gray sky. I imagined Grandpa coming to get me. It kept raining all night, and he never showed up. I gave up waiting and decided it was time to go home. I was about halfway there when I heard someone groaning. At first I thought I should just ignore it and not get involved, but I went over anyway, and it was Grandpa. He was totally soaked, and I could tell right away that he'd been there for a really long time. I yelled, and he opened his eyes a little bit. He smiled weakly and said he was glad I was safe. He'd spent all night out in the rain looking for me. I felt awful. Grandpa had been out in the rain looking for me so long that he'd collapse. I, I was horrible. He'd heard me crying in the rain, but I hadn't heard him. As I ran to get the doctor, I promised whatever god might be listening that if they would only save Grandpa, I'd never ask for another root beer float ever again. He got a real bad fever, and his temperature wouldn't go down for days. The doctor said that if it kept, uh, if it kept up, he'd die. If he died, then I'd be all alone. There wouldn't be anybody left to care about me. The thought of that happening was terrified me. Fortunately, I must have passed some of my luck on to Grandpa because a week later, his fever finally broke. I was glad he wasn't going to die, but I was also a little scared. What if he had decided he didn't want a stupid kid like me around anymore? My plan was to apologize as soon as he woke up, but when the moment came, my brain just stopped. Grandpa started to talk, and it took me a minute to realize he was apologizing. I didn't know what to think. He explained that he was an old man, and that meant he was probably going to die sooner rather than later. He was strict with me because he wanted to make sure I'd be able to make it on my own after he was gone, but maybe he'd been a little too strict? All of the things I'd worried about had been stupid and selfish. Grandpa cared about me a whole lot. He'd been worried when I ran off, and he'd gone out into the rain to look for me. I tried to apologize, but when I opened my mouth, I just started crying. I don't think I've cried that much since I was a baby. But he just smiled and patted my head. I asked him if he'd ever regretted adopting me. His eyes got all wide, and he said, of course not. He told me that he was looking for a really important lady, and because of that, he'd gone to give up. He'd had to give up on pretty much everything else in his life. But when he took me in and started raising me, he felt like he'd gotten some of what he lost back. That was when I decided I'd stay with him forever. Even if he said I couldn't. Tenmyo G end in root beer veritas. Very nice. So, um, we're starting to hit a wall here because I'm going to have to start going to locks now. <laughs> you know, I thought maybe I should end this, but I think I might keep going get a little, some of these, uh, game overs because I can tell you now that a lot of these are just game overs. I'm actually incredibly shocked that I haven't gotten more than just one game over. So, instead of allying, we're going to betray. Right here. 
You see this? After this golem bay, we're going betray. Wait, hang on. Do I want to start there? Fuck it. We're gonna start there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm betraying Luna, aren't I? Betrayal. I'm not feeling bad about it. I mean, I am, but I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get punched for this. I'm sorry, Luna. So, depending on who I, um... Or how long this goes, I might just do this one and end it. Sigma san I'm sorry, Luna. I did the first time. Because I'm an asshole, I'm sorry. なんで黙ってるんですか言い訳ぐらいしてくださいよ。みんなを守るためだったとか、うっかり手が滑っただけだとか、なんでもいいんです。言い過ぎた嘘のような言い訳でも。I wanted to say no, but I couldn't. She was right. I shut my eyes and turned away. Luna's face twisted as she spun away, but not before I saw tears glistening in the corners of her eyes. My heart sank into my stomach like a lump of lead. I'd lost something very precious. Like they say, trust takes years to build, but only a second to break. If only I could have taken that second back, but that was impossible. Life only moves in one direction, and you only get to make your choices once. The past is the past, and it stays there. Just Clover yelled after him, but Tim Neoji ignored her and continued toward the magenta door. She glared at his receding back and muttered something under her breath. Something must have happened between them. Tim Neoji san, Kuoku kun o sagashi ni ikun desu yo ne? Oh, so ja ga? Watashi mo otetsudai shimasu. Koto aru. Eh? To iitai tokoro ja ga. They headed off through the magenta door together. Clover was left standing by herself, brows furrowed and head down, deep in thought. Then suddenly she stood up straight and took off through the cyan door. 